it's 632, and I'd like to call the June 13th, uh, 2024 HCDC meeting to order. Uh, agenda item number two, the consideration of the meeting minutes from May 16th of 2024. Are there any edits or corrections uh, to the May 16th meeting minutes? I may have a motion to approve the May 16th, 2024 HCDC minutes. I motion to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, agenda item number three, public comment. Are there any public comments for items not on the agenda? Uh, it's just a friendly reminder that comments may be up to five minutes. There are no public comments. Uh, agenda item number four, uh, the discussion of landlord incentives for affordable housing. Is there any discussion on uh, consideration or recommendations to City Council? Are we on item four? Yes. Hmm. I was kind of hoping Denise would be here since this was her, her suggestion. That's what I was gonna say. I did not hear back from Denise, so it, she could show up if you wanna discuss it, you can, or you could defer it, you can move it to later in the agenda. I'm not sure if this group I, has ideas. Can we just table it until she shows up and then potentially? Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, agenda item number five, uh, the meeting locations. Uh, it's, we're doing a consideration to change the regular meeting date to the third Monday of each month at 6.30 p.m. within City Hall. Is there any discussion on this? I'm in favor based on the conversations we've had the last few meetings. Seems like a common sense thing to do. I'm fine with it as long as the staff thinks it's the thing to do. Yeah, I think it'd be good for everybody. Parking would be easier. The setup is just better designed for meetings, so mm -hmm. we're definitely in favor. Okay. Should be okay for me. I would yeah, be fine with for it. Me. Would you like a motion? May I have a motion to uh, move the regular meetings to mon the third Monday of each month at 6.30 p.m.? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, agenda item number six, review and consideration of a recommendation to City Council on approval of the FY25 annual action plan. All right, so this is a plan that we bring to you every year. So if you serve a three-year term on the commission, you'll see um, this plan three times. The city determines community priorities through public input through our consolidated planning process, and that's what we're getting ready to do again. And the annual action plan includes specific projects for the next fiscal year that are designed to address the priorities that are identified in the five-year consolidated plan. Um, both plans are HUD-required documents. We have to submit these plans to HUD in order to receive our federal CDBG and home funding. The annual action plan for FY25 includes the activities that HCDC recommended um, after the March meeting. This process is a little bit delayed due to the federal budget, so we're bringing it to you later, normally, later than we normally would. Um, the plan is in a HUD-required format. The easiest way to view the projects and your funding recommendations are in Appendix B. Appendix B is kind of the summary of how we will use the funding um, based on what HCDC recommended. Um, let's see. So I guess a key point to point out, our home allocation was reduced. Um, when we bring you the funding recommendations, we're operating on what we think the budget will be. HUD doesn't give us our grant allocations until um, later through that process. So home funding, I think, across the board was cut 20% at the federal level. So we weren't really anticipating that, but we had enough program income um, to still plug in the projects that you wanted to recommend funding for. Um, some of the sources of the funding in the Appendix B might be different, but the budget allocations that you recommended are the same. Um, let's see, other things to highlight. Projects that were recommended by the commission will support public facility improvements and affordable rental housing. Our home funds require a 15% grant set aside for community housing development organizations. 
Um, so you have to be certified and meet specific requirements in order to access that portion of home funding. A lot of communities struggle with that, but Iowa City's lucky. We have two um, organizations that meet that requirement. So the housing fellowship through this last round will be able to access that set aside. HUD also allows us to use a portion of our CDBG funding for public services, and that portion of funding supports the city's aid to agencies program. Um, I wanted to point out, you probably all saw these, but the cover photos are from the Iowa City South District program. So to remind you, that's a program where the city purchases duplex properties. We rehab the properties and then they're sold as affordable home ownership to income eligible buyers. So if you have time, definitely take a look at those photos. The before and afters are pretty, pretty fun to see. Um, and both of these units, I believe, are sold um, and occupied currently by some new buyers. So that's exciting. Um, I think I'll turn it to you. Um, so the plan has been posted for a public comment starting on May 17th. Mm -hmm. um, no comments have been received to date. Um, so today you guys will re um, consider a recommendation to city council to approve the plan. Um, council meetings is already on Tuesday of next week. Um, so we will present the recommendations from HCDC. Um, we'll also have a staff recommendation. If you recall, if you guys were at the March meeting, we kind of had um, a little bit different recommendation. So we do have concerns about the, the um, eligibility of the shelter house project. So we're gonna, we have that in our uh, memo to council that we're gonna bring up. Um, and then council will decide on the final approval and then we will submit the plan to HUD and wait for approval to move forward with those projects. Can you elaborate on the shelter house issue? Sure, so um, shelter house applied for facility rehab for a cross park place. Um, we had some concerns when um, the commission discussed it about the number of projects they had ongoing and the capacity to take on another project. They have um, several um, facility improvements underway. Um, there was an HVAC <coughs> project that's just now um, closing out that was underway at that time. Um, however, some of the some of the work that's being done, um, it's carpet repair, which be, would be considered um, maintenance under CDBG and is not eligible. Um, so we're recommending that they just reapply next year and work with staff to find some eligible costs. Um, that would be our recommendation to city council. Okay. And in, in that case, um, if the funds aren't going to shelter house, we would recommend they go to the housing fellowship and um, fulfill their full request. They were the next, based on HCDC score, they're the next one, um, next highest score. Can Shelter House apply for home funds for that? <clears throat> um, they, they can apply for rental housing, but they need to meet the city's underwriting requirements. So if you remember in March, that was another thing we were discussing, the, the projects that have to submit a pro forma, they have to meet our standards. Mm -hmm. So if it could meet our underwriting standards, yes. So you need a motion to approve the draft plan. So I just moved. have oh. one question. Okay. Um, I was going through here. I just wanted to note that um, on pages, I don't see pages, it must be, I think it's index D, appendix C, sorry, um, that the amounts for the 30% median income from this year and last year went down this year. So that was interesting and notable for me. And then also the rent um, also went down. For instance, for a one bedroom, the rent went down from 922 to 902. So that was a pleasant surprise. Um, one just question I have on page 49 it, when it's talking about the actions plan to reduce the number of poverty level families, towards the bottom of the paragraph, it has that the city has begun exploring partnerships with Kirkwood Community College and Iowa Workforce Development. Is Kirkwood still in Iowa City? I've been by there and the building looks like it's torn down. Yeah, I don't know that they're physically in Iowa City, but we do we do continue to work with them, especially through our ARPA projects um, for workforce development. Okay, so that would still be appropriate for right. this. I think it looks like you did a lot of hard work on this and it looks nice. Thank you.
there any more discussion or uh, proposed changes to the FY25 annual auction plan? If not, may I have a motion to approve the FY25 annual action plan as is? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, agenda item number seven, staff and commission updates. Are there any updates from staff? Um, we have a couple updates. So tonight, June is the end of HCDC terms for people serving a three-year term. So tonight is Caleb's last meeting. Um, it's also Becky Redis's last meeting. Um, she's not with us tonight, but I wanted to say thank you to both of you. Caleb, I think you served two full terms as chair, and I don't think you ever said no to anything that we asked you to do <laughs> additionally, so that's very much appreciated. Um, is there anything you wanted to comment on? No, I, I don't have much. I've uh, really enjoyed my uh, time with the commission. I think that I've gained a lot of value on site um, from both the community members as well as each of you, and I'm thankful to have been a part of it. Yeah, thank you. Your efforts are definitely appreciated. Um, other updates based on the decision tonight, the next meeting will be July 15th, and that will be in Emma Harvett Hall at City Hall. Um, I will email that out to you, so I don't feel like you have to remember. Um, now that we know the new meeting frequency schedule, I'll send you a calendar of dates for the upcoming fiscal year, and then in July we can talk about like if there's other presentations or things that you wanna hear, updates from agencies or things you're interested in, we can work on kind of plugging those into the agenda. So if you have thoughts on that, maybe start thinking about that and bring it to the July meeting. Um, I'm gonna jump around. Do you wanna do a, like a con plan update? Sure. So. Um we have, we're working with a consultant to um, update our five-year consolidated plan. Um, we are going to be holding some stakeholder sessions. Um, initially had them planned for the end of June, but kind of ran out of time to give all the proper notices. So um, sometime in July and August, we're gonna have um, a series of stakeholder sessions as well as public input meetings um, that expect to be at neighborhood centers and you'll all be invited to that. Um, and we're gathering input to determine the priorities for the next five years of funding. So that's, that's our public input process. Uh, the only other thing I have on my list, Horacio, you mentioned we were talking a little bit about maybe alternative ways to track attendance, if people had preference, if people like doing the attendance survey, if there's an easier way to get responses for people on meeting attendance, if there's any ideas on that. The attendance surveys are good. You're fine with that? I like those. Okay. Yeah. Would anyone find it helpful if we send a calendar invite as well? Certainly can't hurt. Okay. It, it is kind of helpful when things just like pop up on our calendar and I can be like, oh yeah, there's that there. Okay. Maybe we'll do both and see how that goes. That is the end of my staff updates, unless you have anything else. At um, <clears throat> at City Hall, um, I know you said one time that the uh, opportunity for visuals are better. Can you explain that? Um, I don't know, have you ever, I don't know if you've ever watched a council meeting that's recorded, but you'd be, yes. the commission would be sitting up where city council sits, right. and the screen would be, if you're sitting up there, to your left, but the lights are more dimmable, and I feel like the screen is more easily so, viewable. Yes, and each each spot has a, a computer screen that shows the, oh. what's on the screen, so you'll have more of okay. a closer up look. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that would be helpful. Yeah, I think it'll be a good good and fit. And if the screen is e more easily read, that's helpful too. Okay, I was going to ask, and I'm sorry I'm taking up so much time. I missed this yesterday because I lost track of time. But did anyone happen to attend the? Um, I forget who it was put on by out in Coralville. Um, I did. I was going to speak about it on the oh. next agenda item. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. What's the next agenda item? Information from commissioners. Do, I thought that's what we were doing. Do, sorry. do any commissioners have any updates? If I've moved ahead of the, if I've moved ahead, I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, I'd just like to thank Caleb. Um, I think that uh, I've been in this meeting or on this commission, I've been in the meetings for years, and I do, I must say that you're one of the best chairs that I've ever seen, so thank you. I'm very sorry to see you go. And as far as Becky, uh, Becky did not miss one meeting, um, and she worked very hard on the 
aid to agencies, revamping, reframing things. So, you know, I think that hopefully that the city will continue to at least look at, at those recommendations from those people. So anyway, thanks to both of you. So I did attend a panel last night that was held at the Coralville Public Library and several of the people that presented that were on the panel are here, which thank you for coming. And um, the, it was basically a panel of local experts to talk about the affordable housing issues and how their organizations are uh, working to address them. They, it was hosted by the Community Foundation and sponsored and facilitated by the Affordable Housing Coalition. There was an overview of the issue in the country, Johnson County and Iowa City by Ellen McCabe of the Housing Trust Fund, who's also here. Um, she pointed out that Iowa City is the most expensive place to live in Iowa to rent. Um, other panelists included representatives from the Housing Fellowship, Shelter House, Iowa Catholic Worker House, Open Heartland, Iowa City Community School District, Iowa Valley Habitat for Humanity, and the uh, panel provided excellent information, not only about the issues, but also about strategies they implement to address the local crisis. Um, one of the things that Ellen presented was the, uh, sort of, is it the out of, out of reach data? Out of reach data for Iowa. So I bought, I brought a screenshot for everybody to look at. So it's really interesting, it shows the, uh, affordable wage, er, earning wage in Iowa City to afford apartments <laughs> and some other information that's really fascinating if you look at what's going on. I think, clerk me if I'm wrong, but did you say that there's 10,000 households in, is that, Johnson in Johnson County? Who are cost burdened or extremely Right, who are cost burdened or extremely cost burdened with rental housing. 10,000 family households, that's a lot, so. It is a lot, and there's a lot of extremely cost burdened um, households right. Right. that um, I worry about. I fall into that category, so I know it well. Um, can you, okay. Um, oh, okay, it's Iowa. Is there one for just Johnson County? What are you, what are you looking at, Carol? What, um, is there just one what? The state facts about the minimum wage, average winter, renter wage, is there something? Um, Down below, and that says <coughs> Iowa City. <coughs> the housing wage would be $21.67 gotcha. mm -hmm. an hour. Which is the most expensive according to this in the entire state. Yes. Right. right. And does that really help? That seem, still seems kind of low to be helpful what? in terms of affording housing. The twenty-one sixty-seven. It's all, I mean, that's the data. I know. I, know. I know it's the data. I just... Helped when I brought it to the Board of Supervisors and they strove to raise the wage of all of their employees. Right. But the facts are that the minimum wage here is still $7.25 an hour. So you'd have to work uh, two and a half full time jobs at minimum wage to afford a two bedroom home. kind of ties in a little bit with what um, Denise was wanting to visit about concerning um, landlord incentives. I know that I saw in here that there's the, um, remind me what it is, it's for landlords to be able to recoup costs that are excessive when renters move out. The risk mitigation? Yes. What did you say, Erica? The landlord risk mitigation program is what she was referring to. Oh. <clears throat> Can you think of anything else that the city does to assist landlords in helping the people who really are needing housing like this? 
Sure, so we have our risk mitigation program. Um, it's not open broadly to everyone. It's, it's um, to specific populations. Um, we, may, we may look at expanding if it's kind of a pilot project um, at this point. We do have a security deposit assistance. I know that doesn't really help landlords um, directly, but that helps get people into units. Um, we also have a climate action pilot program um, that gives $25,000 as a forgivable, forgivable grant for energy efficiency improvements in exchange to the landlord insuring or accepting a voucher for five years. Um, and that's for units in Iowa City that are duplex or single family. Um, that's that's also kind of a pilot project that's just getting started. For five years, I like that. Yeah. Um, so what, what we're trying to figure out is ways to incentivize landlords to accept vouchers as well. Um, mm -hmm. so there's, I think there's opportunity to, exp that's a short list, and we, there's opportunity to expand on that. So I'd be really interested what, what you all, um, ideas that you all have. Does the staff have any ideas on ways to um, increase efforts? Um, so, so just kind of research online, um, some of the things that came up are like um, landlord bonuses, like one-time payments, um, at lease up or renewal, um, kind of like a signing bonus type thing. Um, we had a rehab program for rentals that wasn't highly utilized, and I think the issue was related to the funding source, made it really complicated, but if we could um, do uh, some sort of rental rehab program with a different source of funding, I think landlords might take advantage of that. Um, and would that translate into uh, landlords accepting more people with vouchers? Um, depends on what parameters we put on it, I, I guess. So that's open. Um, some of the other ideas online were kind of procedural, like um, offering mediation services to support landlord-tenant relations or tenant and tenant disagreements, um, fast-tracking inspections. I think there may be some opportunities with our inspection side, maybe waiving the permit fees, that kind of thing, and then just kind of relationship building, um, working just working more closely with the landlords and mm. learning what their issues are. Do we have something like? Um when um, when I was working for the Center for Worker Justice, um, I helped with a couple of cases where uh, tenants were claiming that the landlords were charging them two or three months after they um, they left the the property ridiculous amounts of money for repairing the uh, the unit. Uh, besides. Uh, taking the the deposit from them, so um, at least I at, I, I attend uh, four cases. So uh, we figured out that we didn't have you know an, an authority where to go at the moment. Um, so um, and and then you know they, they pass the the that bill to a collector to agency collector. So uh, they 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 don't they really they don't have any anywhere to go so mm -hmm. um and sometimes they you know that even the landlord they didn't have any proof that you know the the, the unit you know was um broken or something that they have to repair that um they didn't have any proof they just charged them and they didn't take the, they didn't give the deposit back for example in any of the in in all of the cases so they didn't give the deposit back plus they charged extra yes. money um did that hamper those people from finding another place to live if there's a landlord who's claiming they owe money to them? Yes. How, how did that a, get fixed? Uh, there's a big body of landlord-tenant law in the state of Iowa. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, landlord legally cannot, cannot not return a security deposit without following the law. And, and if they do, they have to within well, as far as I know, within 30 days, yes. send that. And if the, even then, if you, even if they don't have a forwarding address, at least send it to the place where the people lived with an itemized bill of what what they're using for the security deposit. And yeah. if there's more money, if there's more damage, or if they haven't paid rent, they can add those costs on. And you know the the land the the tenant then would have the opportunity to go to civil court. 
to say, you know, this isn't true. There was a big case a while, a few years ago, where a landlord was charging, I think it was to clean carpets in a I large know. apartment building. Well, there's, and, you know. And that was deemed, um, it know. went through the court system, right. that was deemed the landlord's responsibility right. and not the tenant's responsibility. Right. So there's, but, but what there's, I'm wondering is, did these people have legal representation to help them through this? No. They can call legal aid. Sure. Is that I mean, something not, that worker justice utilized was legal aid? Do you know? Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, it's, when I read Carl, Kyle's letter, um, I think it's a great thing to try and get for-profit landlords to accept vouchers for sure. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things around that. One is the stick, first of all, the stigma of having a voucher. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the landlord, I think, does have to do a few more things than if they don't accept the voucher. For instance, you know, the pre, the pre-rental inspections, that sort of thing. Um, but they're also absolutely con guaranteed rent every single month. Um, so, and the people have thing, had their oh. background checked already. So that's something that the landlords right. don't have to worry about. So that's another added benefit. There was a pamphlet out one time that I think the city put out um, that uh, <coughs> prospective renters could hand to landlords that outlined the benefits of having somebody with a voucher. Do you remember that? Uh, it may have been before my time, but that I That was maybe I three or four it. years ago. That might be something to resurrect. It was well, really I good think, informational. I think it might be helpful for, and if Denise was here, she could help us out with this. But for everybody to understand, first of all, and again, I'm not saying I don't think private landlords should take, should not provide affordable housing, but what it costs to actually operate rental housing, you know. Um, last night, one of the panelists was saying about insurance has gone up for, uh, landlord protection insurance. You know, there's insurance, there's property taxes, there's maintenance, there's reserves, there's all kinds of stuff that they have to do. They may have to take care of common areas if it's a big apartment complex, an elevator. You know, these things add up. And in my experience, the way to reduce rent is to lower your debt, your hard debt. So this commission can help them with that if they want to come in and apply for the federal funds that we recommend to the council that they would get. We, and in fact, when Kyle says the fact that as long as he can remember, no other, it, that we recommend funding to all 501c3 nonprofits, that's not true for one thing. Um, and I sort of, I sort of took a little issue with that, that he says the fact is, because it's kind of like the lottery. I mean, you can't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket, right? So if they don't come in and apply for home funds or CDBG funds, then we can't just say, well, you know, let's give it to a private landlord because that's not how this process works. So, um, how does that but I also think, get out? I'm sorry, I also think that it would be good to have Kyle come in and do a presentation about, you know, his operations. Because mm -hmm. he, he runs a lot, of, a lot of rental housing. And I think he does have property that accepts vouchers, isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, and then maybe if the city, if they could get on the agenda of the landlord association and then say, you know, here's, here's the federal funding that the city receives for housing or, or, and CDBG. Because they could, they could probably come in and apply for some CDBG funds. Oh, but they have to understand also when they apply, I'm sorry, they have to understand that if they receive federal funds, there's a whole lot of regulations that, that come with those. 
a lot of private landlords don't have the expertise to comply. They also don't have the incentive because what they really want to do is make money, right? I mean, and I don't, I don't fault them for that because that's what they do for their business. So, I mean, it's a complicated issue and I think that um, it's too bad Kyle's not here, it's too bad Denise isn't here um, because they're the landlords. But can we put this on the agenda for next month also so that hopefully we can get one or two of them here and continue this? Yeah, because I, I don't think there's any private landlords here, are there? <laughs> oh, you are? That's right. <laughs> Ellen is. That's right. I forgot. Um, so I don't know what other people think. So defer I, number item four to Nick's meeting to try and get more comments from them is what you were suggesting or mm -hmm. if if there's a way to get a hold of Kyle and Denise and and um, I just think before we make recommendations it behooves us to get to to educate ourselves mm -hmm. about that and I think it it really <coughs> would help private landlords if they could educate themselves about it you know there are ways that that somebody could help them comply with these regulations for a price you know I mean nobody does that for free you would you would think so and there are private landlords who don't operate the large apartment complexes and and stuff there are people who own maybe one or two rental houses or duplexes and, I and think, those are ideal people to try and, and work with and I think they probably I think some of them, at least in my experience, belong to the Landlords Association. I didn't know there was such a thing. Well, there is. And it, I think it used to be huge, but. Any idea how big it is? It's big, right? I don't know how many members I belong. Mm -hmm. And I know the Housing Fellowship at least used to belong and go, they have these luncheons, you know, so. Um, when I first started at the Housing Fellowship, I went and they were like, I was like a pariah, you know. They were like, why are you here? I was like, we don't take Section 8. I said, well, that's not a problem. I do. So, you know, there you go. And they had good lunch, too. I so. like that idea of, of trying to get on their agenda and make a presentation of sorts. That would be up to Kyle, I, mean, okay. I think. I don't know. But again, my whole point is that both bodies could educate themselves a little bit more. And work together. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen, Carol, but you know. I'm it looks optimistic. like Kyle's the president. What? It looks like Kyle's the president. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he brings this up and then he's in Utah. Come on. Anyway. Oh, should, should we take a motion to? defer that I motion to table it till next month yeah I think that's fine unless there's anybody if you wanted I don't know if anyone wanted to make public comments or anything we had heard at some point that people might be interested in commenting on it so it's up to you oh. I don't know if anyone in the audience has thoughts any public comments I believe that Tracy had to made a presentation to the group in the last year or so I can't hear you. Do you want to come to the microphone? I, I believe that Tracy Haichu came, went to the Landlord Association meeting within the last year. I do support the education process between the groups. It, it's hard to convince them that there's an incentive, but we can, if Kyle was here, we could talk to him. If for what we it's had worth, a, a package of incentives to present, that would really be helpful. I think we do have that, don't we? Didn't we create a incentives? Maybe not necessarily for landlords, but for development of affordable housing. And for what it's worth, when we have the funding rounds, we do try to send that out to anyone that we've worked with previously on CDBG or home projects. It hasn't been in my time with the city, but there there have been previous instances of private companies doing um, affordable housing projects with the city. 
Do you know if there's yeah. some sort of available funding if they dig really hard the city to come up with an incentive package for landlords? We, we have a page on our website, um, incentives for rental, affordable rental. I think it's geared towards more towards developers of housing um, mm -hmm. at that stage rather than uh, maybe an existing landlord that's looking for incentives. Um, but we do have that up. Um, and then we also have staff that regularly <coughs> attend the Apartment Owners <coughs> Association. Um, mainly our housing authority and our housing inspection staff are part of that group. Or okay, attend the meetings, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So is there a way to to include private landlords on the section that's already on the web page? Carol, I didn't hear the... Is, it, include, is it easy? To, it, can you do what? Um, on the... On the um, web page for the city where there's incentives for developers can we also include a section for land current landlords incentives well as as we develop those and like as we develop incentives to offer we could add that to the website okay um, one other thing that we've discussed at the staff level um, working with the affordable housing coalition is to send out a survey to the private landlords and see get some input from that group about what kind of incentives and that was specific to the um, acceptance of the housing choice vouchers. And as far as I know, that hasn't gone out yet, but it's something we've discussed. Um, so just, sorry, just to make sure we have our uh, T's crossed, may I have a motion to uh, defer agenda item number four, the discussion of landlord incentives to the July uh, 15th, 2024 meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried.